How's it going everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Baking World Tour. Today we're making Bhutanese food. Tingmo and Emma Dachi. Now I'm sure I completely destroyed that pronunciation. Tingmo are the steamed buns and Emma Dachi is a chili cheese soup. Steamed buns of course are popular all over Asia. But the chili cheese soup, that is Bhutan's national dish. And they work so well together. That soft and pillowy bun dipped in that soup. And the best part is that it's so easy to make both of them. So let's get to it and see what we need. For the steamed buns, we'll need some strong white bread flour, water, yeast, salt, sugar, vegetable oil, and some more vegetable oil for layering the dough. Now when it comes to the equipment, we'll need a large bowl for mixing our dough in, scales, scraper, temperature probe, a rolling pin, and of course we'll need some kind of steamer. I've got this bamboo steamer, it works pretty well. And of course some non-stick paper would come in handy. Now for the chili cheese soup, we'll need some chilies, some spring onions, red onions, diced tomato, a little bit of salt, sliced garlic, butter, water, and the cheese. And we'll need a small pan for cooking. So let's start by making the dough. My kitchen is really warm today and because I'm kneading dough by hand I'm gonna use completely cold water. And this is such a basic dough, there's no special steps here. Simply grab a large bowl, add the water, the yeast, the salt, the sugar and the oil and then mix it all up. And this basic steam bun dough can be used for different steam buns, you could fill them perhaps. But whatever you decide to do, make sure you mix your ingredients well. You want to dissolve any large salt and sugar crystals and hydrate the yeast. And now add the flour. Now you can continue on with the scraper. Mix it together until there's no more dry flour left. And if the scraper is not doing the job, continue on by hand. Now tip the dough out on the table and we can start kneading it. I'm going to use the regular kneading method here. What I like to do is press down and forwards with the heel on my right hand then using the fingers of my left hand, I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand, then turn it and repeat. Once you've done this a few times, the motion will become fluent, it will be like second nature. If you feel that it's sticking a little bit to the table and to your hands, just scrape all up and then continue. The dough hydration is very low, so it's not sticky because of the water content. What does make it sticky is the sugar, and that goes for any kind of dough. Sugar acts as a liquefying agent. But it's not a big deal, just scrape all up and continue. And once your dough is nice and smooth and stretchy, you're ready to proof it. Now pop it in a bowl and take its temperature. 25 to 26 degrees Celsius is just about right for this. I'm going to cover it up and leave it to ferment for one hour. And after that first proof, we need to give it a fold. Folding benefits the dough in a number of ways. It will equalize the temperature in it, it will degas it, and we will create extra layers in the dough structure, making it stronger. So here's what you do. Take the dough out of the bowl, place it smooth side down on the table, flatten it out, then fold the top third down, and fold the bottom up, and then cross the two sides over in the middle. All we're trying to do here is create extra layers. And now flip it smooth side up again, tighten it against the table, and that's the fold done. You may use the very fine dusting of flour, because this dough is just a little bit sticky. But as you can see, I managed just fine without it. Now back in the bowl it goes for another hour of fermentation. And now it should really start puffing up. If your dough is rising slowly, perhaps because your kitchen is cooler, then simply leave it for longer. But this one's puffed up nicely, so I'm ready to take the next step. Dust it with flour, pop it out on the table, smooth side down. And at this point we can use quite a lot of flour because we have to roll it out and we don't want it to stick. But whenever I need to roll a dough, I always like to start by hand, just to press it out with my fingers. This way I can get it into a general shape before I start rolling it. And that makes it easier to roll it out evenly. So once you've pressed it out a bit, grab your rolling pin and start rolling. We need to roll this until it's a nice large rectangle. There's no precise measurements here, just a big old rectangle will do. And what we need to do now is take the oil that I mentioned earlier for the layers and brush the whole surface with it. And you can use a brush if you want, but I think by hand it's just easier and quicker. 
So now we need to fold it up into three layers. So grab one side, pick it up and fold over one third of the dough. Try to keep it nice and square, nice and even. Don't stretch out the corners too much. Just take your time, there's no rush, do it nice and evenly. And now we can fold over the remaining flap. Again, just even it out, make sure it's nice and straight. So we have a big piece of dough with three layers. But we need many more layers in these buns, so I'll show you how to do that. You can dust the dough and the table with some flour to prevent any stickage. Lay the dough down horizontally. And because we're making four buns, we need to slice this dough into four pieces. Now I don't think I should mention this, but don't mess up your table. As you can see, I'm not doing a slicing motion, I'm simply pressing the knife down to the table. So divide the dough into four, and then divide each quarter into six equal strips. What I like to do to get it nice and precise, cut it in half first, and then cut each half into three. So each bun will be made out of six strips. Take three strips and place them on top of the other three strips. Now grab the ends, pick the dough up and stretch it out until it's nice and long. And now twist it up. Now hold it with one hand and wrap it around with the other. The end pieces should end up underneath the bun. You don't want to see any loose strands basically. But of course it doesn't have to be perfect. But here's another look. Stretch it, twist it, then hold it and wrap it around. And then finally tuck the end underneath. And now they're ready for the final proof. I'm going to place them on a tray with some pre-cut parchment paper squares. And the squares might look quite large in relation to the buns, but they will puff up massively. Now let's clean down this horrible mess. The final proofing time will depend on the temperature of your kitchen. It may be less than an hour, an hour or an hour and a half. Mine actually took closer to an hour and a half. The sugar in this dough really slows down fermentation, so keep that in mind. But however long it takes, leave them to rise until they're nicely puffed up. And if they need longer, don't rush it. Leave them to ferment. But these look pretty good, right? They puffed up beautifully. Now my steamer is quite large. We're only placing two buns in at a time, because they will puff up a lot. And whilst the first two are steaming, I place the other two in the fridge so they don't overproof. The cold will slow down fermentation. And these will take no more than 12 minutes. Of course, make sure your steamer is preheated and the water is boiling properly. And whilst the buns are steaming, might as well make the chili soup. Now the name of this soup, Emma Dachi, which I probably butchered, it literally means chili cheese. Emma meaning chili, dachi, cheese. I do hope it's not the other way around. I don't know if there's anyone from Bhutan here watching. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now, the way this works, you simply combine all the ingredients except the cheese in a pot. And I left some spring onions behind, just to sprinkle on top once it's finished. And when it comes to the water, don't add too much, just pour it in until you can see it. Now let's pop it on a stove on high heat, we'll bring it up to a boil and we'll boil it for 10 minutes. And the simplicity of this is crazy, you simply boil everything together and finish it with cheese. At first I thought it may be a bit bland and uninteresting, but it tastes amazing. And the amount of ingredients, the ratios that you use, is totally up to you. If you want more chili, add more chili. If you want more tomatoes, add more tomatoes. It will still be the same method at the end of the day. So after around 10 minutes of boiling, turn the heat off and then add the cheese. You don't want to boil the cheese, otherwise it may curdle. Now simply let it melt and finally stir it all up. And that's how you make Bhutan's national dish, chili cheese soup. And it's absolutely delicious. I need to find some more Bhutanese food. Of course in Bhutan they use yak cheese. But that can be substituted with many different cheeses. Just use what you have available. Right, the buns should be done by now. As you can see they are puffed up massively. Now I can take these out and pop the other two in. And that's how you make simple steamed buns. They're nice and fluffy, super light, stretchy, chewy, and I just love tearing the layers apart. And the buns with the soup, it's like a match made in heaven. Well, in fact, it's a match made in the mountains, right? Let me know what you think of this dish. 
Is that something you would try? Have you heard of it? And do check out the other episodes in the Baking World Tour. And if you're one of the 80% of people who watch these videos without subscribing, click that button already. What are you waiting for? There are so many more delicious things coming up. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.